AccuStats Video Productions presents from the LA Expo Hilton Convention Center in Burbank, California, AccuStats Eight Ball Invitational Championships. Along with Larry Schwartz, this is Bill N. Cardona bringing you third round action in a very, very interesting and highly competitive tournament. And what I, I mean, these guys have really been playing well. I mean, every time a player goes to the table, they they give you a hundred and ten percent effort. This has been a great tournament, Larry. Oh, without a doubt, Bill, these players are going all out. They're playing great. Uh, previous match, Reyes, just phenomenal shots to hang in and get out of line, just make uh, come with a just a great shot. And this match, you have Bustamante, who's breaking the balls uh, as good as anybody. I think he's the best breaker in the world. And uh, Eminen, who's also breaking them very good and also playing extremely well. Uh, Mika Eminen, uh, in my opinion, is really, really playing well. Even though he has a loss, his record stands at two and one. He's playing extremely well. And uh, Bustamante's record stands at two and zero. So therefore, he can actually afford a loss, not that he wants one, but he can still afford a loss and still has the opportunity to go on to win this event. But it's a must win for Eminem. Eminem must win this match if he expects to go on to win this tournament. Bustamante has the luxury of, 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 or can afford a loss, not that he wants one, like I mentioned. Eminem's playing extremely well. He has a big break. And like Larry said, Bustamante also is playing extremely well. And he has one of the biggest, if not the biggest break in the world. And, and I look for really an explosion tonight. Both of these players you know, uh, have break the ball so well, and that's that's a weapon you really must have playing eight ball, particularly with the rules that are in place, the Accustat eight ball rules. And what we'll do now is we'll review the rules very quickly for you people out there. And that is to a race eight, and we lag to determine the breaker. You must break the balls open, and that's you know, left upon the discretion of our tournament director, Scott Smith. Okay, break uh, allowed from anywhere behind the uh, the line. There are no box or anything like that to restrict the players from breaking the balls from another area. You can go anywhere behind the head string to break the balls. We're playing base of the ball. We're also playing, which I feel is a very good ro rule, rotate the break. And that actually uh, gives everybody an opportunity to, uh, to, to show their skills and in, in uh, how they prepare themselves to play. Quite often you see a player play, play in, a, in an event or a tournament or a match. He don't even get a chance to shoot because of the breaker continually stringing racks and racks and racks. And I think that's an injustice in a sense. That's why I'm a proponent of rotate the break. Eight ball on the break is a win. Eight ball on the break accompanied by a scratch is a loss. Now, if you scratch on the break, your incoming player has ball in hand anywhere on the table. We're playing a three foul rule. Fouls on all balls, all balls, clothing included. No jump cues. And the shot after the break, regardless of who's at the table, the shot that follows the break, all balls are neutral and it's an open table. You can choose either high or low balls, regardless if you pocket a ball or not. All balls are neutral and the eight ball is neutral only after the break. After the break, you can use the eight ball for a combination by hitting it first, but only the shot after the break can you do that, okay? And uh, with, now that we have the rules in place, the players look like they're in place, we can go down to the floor where Scott Smith is and he'll introduce the players. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, we'd like to introduce the principals for this uh, second match on day number three. In the uh, booth for AccuStats Video Productions is the voice of AccuStats, Mr. Bill N. Cardona, with special guest, Mr. Larry Swartz. And doing the... Uh, uh, handling the racking duties for the entire Invitational 8-Ball Championships is Lou Sardo with the Sardo Tight Rack. Yours truly, Scott Smith, will be doing the officiating. And at this time, we'd like to introduce the players for this matchup on day number three. Our first gentleman is sponsored on tour by Puyat Sports. He is player representative for Bear Cues of Germany. Former winner of the Challenge of Champions Tournament. That's a $50,000 winner-take-all tournament. Former winner at the Los Angeles Bicycle Club Invitational Tournament. And he was a former number one ranked player in the world for the Camel Pro Billiard Series two years ago. He, ladies and gentlemen, he is the reigning World Masters Champion. He resides in Kiel, Germany from the Republic of the Philippines. Please welcome Mr. Francisco <coughs> Bustamante. Thank you. Mr. Bustamante is undefeated going into this, his third match. His opponent has a record of 2-1 thus far in the uh, round-robin format. 
His opponent is sponsored by Amsterdam's Billiards. They're located in New York City. He is player representative for Vitali Manufacturing and Capone Custom Cues. He is a former winner of the Taipei Peace Cup, the Euro Straight Pool Championships, the ESPN Sudden Death Seven Ball Tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning WPA World Nine Ball Champion from Helsinki, Finland, Mr. Mika Eminen. Eminen and Bustamante, thank you. Yeah, we have. Gentlemen, a, you may lag for the first break. We have a good one here, Larry. There's no question about that. You're the current world nine ball champion and Eminen, Mika Eminen. And, you know, what can you say? Francisco Bustamante really has all the skills, all the weapons, can defeat any player playing any game. Mr. He's got the biggest break the in the world. I mean, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a toss of a coin as far as I'm concerned. It sure is, Bill, and I believe it's going to be a, an extremely close match. Uh, like, like we said earlier, both players have big breaks, and I look for a very tight match. And uh, I'd like to make mention of the fact that uh, my, my partner here, Mr. Schwartz, is from Chicago, Illinois. He has a uh, monthly uh, column in Billiards Digest in the eight ball column. And he also has a great book out on the market today. He's the author of Eight Ball Handbook for Winners, which is a great book. It's a, it's a must read. A lot of the pro players I've talked to have read the book and they've really find it extremely interesting and very, 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 very instructional. <laughs> well, thank you, Bill. I Let's see, Bustamante, what a powerful break he has. Poof. No, the, the well, ball, look, I, mean, the scratch. I, mean, I mean, I just can't believe the action that this man gets off of his break. His balls just rush, and I'm talking about rush in the true sense of the word. Rush to the other end of the table. You know, they don't roll, they rush down there. I mean, I mean, this man has the most explosive break that I've ever ever seen anyone. Me too, have. Bill. It's, it's so incredible. Ooh. Very it's incredible break, and it makes totally the game awesome. a lot easier after that. Totally awesome. And when he, when he gets done breaking the balls, either color is a good color. <laughs> well, here, here salads are a lot better. Here salads, he's going to have no trouble with these salads. He moved the eight to let uh, open, up the, uh, open up the path for the four ball. And uh, from here, it's, uh, it's really a routine, very simple out for, uh, for Bustamante. He's going to go down and get the seven now. I, 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 I play for the five now. I would have played for the five, six, four. The, I would play for the five, seven, six, four. I should say. Five. You play five, seven, six, four. Uh, well, yeah, I play I seven. Okay. Seven. I, I'm liking the seven to come back up for the six because now he has an. Uh, he has like a. Uh, you know. Yeah. He could fall on the four or he could fall on the six. Yeah. I, no, I agree with that. That's a good option. I don't like the okay. way he hit this though. No, I like to hit it with a natural ball, a high ball. It has much better control of cue ball hitting it with a high ball. Hitting it with a draw, a draw stroke from the distance he was away from the seven ball, anything could happen, and that's the results right there. That's, that speaks for itself. Yeah, he, he's put himself in a real, real bad spot here, Bill. And uh, There's no reason why he should have gotten that close to the sixth ball, you know, because he's a great shot maker. That's why the high ball approach that particular shot was by far much better, you know. It that's, just, uh, that's exactly what I thought he was going to do, too. I mean, it was laying totally perfect to do that. And uh, now he's going he's gonna to have to, uh, he's going to have to, come off I like going to the uh, to the end rail where he's at right now with his cue looking from what uh, you know what Mika is going to look at from down there which is very very smart to go down and see where you're going to put your opponent see what he'll be looking at he would like to cover the 11 with the six like he's done oh that Beautiful. shot was actually executed as perfectly as you could execute a shot and he really gave up the minimum with that effort. <clears throat> but of course, uh, Eminem, the champion that he is, is an excellent shot maker. And uh, if he misses the 15, he, that's the ball he'll be shooting, the 15. He should lag at the 15. Uh, in, in, in the event that he does miss it, the cue ball will then end up near that bottom cushion. It's, it's a type of a shot where you know you're not a favorite to make, but if you do miss it, you know, at least leave a lot of distance for your opponent and don't give him an angle on anything to break loose at six 
from the 11. So he'd f fare much better if he lagged. And, and he might even be better off, let's take a look at the monitor. He might even be better off crossing the 15 with the cue ball, sending the cue ball down here. I like that shot too, Bill. Uh, well, he hit the shot perfect. He's going up, looks, it looks like he's gonna scratch. No. Well, he hit that shot excellent. And uh, I believe uh, <laughs> where he put the cue ball, if he didn't pocket it, he was uh, he was in a pretty safe spot, but. Okay, take a look at the situation he's confronted with here, Larry. The 11 and the six are tied up right here. Okay, this is the cue ball. This is the 10 ball. Pocket the 10, maybe repositioning the cue ball somewhere in this area here, which gives, then gives him the ability to go this direction with the cue ball to open up the 11 and the 6. He's looking to see if the 11, does it go in the uh, opposite side, Bill? Oh, I don't know. I can't tell. But uh, in either event, in either event, all right, if he repositions the cue ball for the 13 in this area here, right here, Okay, he has the option to shoot to 13 and either go this way, play for the side, or go into the balls themselves. Yes, we've been just informed by uh, Scott Smith, the referee, it does clear for the side. So uh, I, w I would leave that alone. I mean, it's the, I would stay away from it and not go into it. I believe he's going he's gonna to go from the 14, come up for the 11 in the side, <coughs> since it does clear. First game, it's a, it's a big confidence builder. Get out, one nothing. It'll be him and his break. If he gets out, he could go ahead, 2 nothing. Could he possibly be choosing to go this route? Oh, you know, around here? That's exactly what he's thinking about right now. He's trying to decide yeah. what's better. I think, I think that way, uh, the way you're showing here, on the screen is uh, it would be the best way because doesn't look like he's doing it that way. It looks like he's looks like he's just going to the cushion in this direction here. He hit it. It looks like he hit it perfectly. Couldn't ask for any better than that, Bill. Straight in on the side. I don't think he should have any trouble here. The first game's going to go to Inman. Bustamante really uh, foiled on an excellent opportunity in game number one to take the early lead in the match. Sending himself out of line for the six. Eminem steps to the table, making a very difficult shot on his opening shot. Mr. Eminem wins game and then number continued one. continued to run out. One to zero. He'll be breaking Bill, in game number two. Bill Eminem's been breaking terrific. If anybody out of these the six players in this tournament, I put Eminem, I'd say a second the second best break in the tournament aside from the his opponent Bustamante. Well, well I can't argue that point Larry I've been watching all the players play and Eminem does possess a very big break and that's one of the reasons why it's not the sole reason obviously it's one of the reasons why he's the current world champion nine ball champion because it takes a big break to play nine ball as well and if you don't have a big break playing nine ball you know you're not going to cash in many checks. That's for, that's for sure. That's for sure. An eight ball in this format too. It's uh, the key to the uh, key to the match. He's uh, also a great straight pool player. He has a 200 plus high run. He was telling me, which will help his eight ball game quite a bit. Another power break right here. Balls are wide open. I'm sure he'll take uh, stripes here, seeing that the four ball is uh, is in a spot where if he did ha if he did elect solids, the four ball would be blocked by the thirteen. But the twelve ball is a problem ball, you know, for stripes. You know, the four ball is very workable. He can get to the four ball by clear by clearing the seven off the table. He's elected stripes. I, I could see him, uh, Bill, coming down for the 10 ball. <coughs> a 
like he has and playing the uh, and playing the 15 ball and then electing to shoot the 12 ball up in the uh, in one of the corners or he's looking at it in the side so basically very little cue ball movement here I don't think he should have any problem <laughs> I like the way he's uh, taking his time here he wants to see exactly where he wants to be He's trying to see if the uh, if the twelve passes the six. If it doesn't pass the six, well, he'll want to shoot here. He wants to shoot the ten in here, roll down in this. He wants to roll down about in this area right here. For the fifteen. And then he has his option on the 12. He wants to play it. I, I really, I don't, uh, I would just assume play it right in the corner. Well, he's, he, apparently it goes past the six. He, I, I, Bill, I didn't like his selection there. He wasn't sure. He was still looking at it even after, uh, after he got position on it, so he be, he just became a big underdog in this game, and he had an open pocket. He had an open pocket on that day, on the uh, on the twelve ball, and uh, there was the, no reason he could have followed down and played the fifteen and played the thing now Bustamante has a an open table here he has a little problem here with uh, with the 12 tying up his six ball what I like doing here is uh, I'd like shooting the one here or the or the two getting on the three playing the combination pocketing pocketing Inman's 12 ball and positioning the cue ball behind the four ball where he has no shot. Very interesting situation he's confronted with here. I don't believe he should try to run out. Now he could go two cushions now if he if he chooses into the 6-12 but that's rather haphazard. I wouldn't do that. Well, that's uh, th that's what he wanted to do there. I think that's a very wise decision. He didn't want to pocket the ball, leave as many balls of his as he can on the table. And uh, I think it was a very wise shot. Uh, Inman's in a lot of trouble here, having only two balls left on the table. And I don't think he could see either one. Yeah, I, be I believe he can see the 15. You have a better uh, vantage point than I do on this particular shot. But... Uh, uh, Bustamante really hasn't accomplished much by doing what he did. He would have if he would have uh, snookered him, in, but he didn't do that. <laughs> I myself, uh, if I were Bustamante, I would rather try to reposition a ball down table near the 6 and 12. Well, I believe that's, that's what he has to do. Just, well. uh -huh. Now you see, uh, he's, he's made a, a tremendously good shot. And now he's opened up the pocket and he's put a lot of pressure on Bustamante now. Without a doubt, Bill. He opened up that ball and now Bustamante has to uh, has to pocket a ball here. Uh, I would have tried to reposition, uh, that is, Bustamante if I were he. The last time he was at the table, I would have tried to reposition a solid ball down this end of the table because uh, I have more balls than he does, so therefore it would give me much more options. And uh, with another with another solid that's under the table, I would have a lot of balls to play position for that ball to do something with the six twelve. But he opted to play some sort of a possible hook, and really didn't succeed in his attempt. And uh, now look, he's he's really uh, he's got a problem. Well, Francisco's uh, shooting the one ball. And he didn't, I don't believe he came down in a very good position.
Here's a spot where I believe he's just, is he just playing safe and trying to put him behind the seven here? That's what he's doing. I like that a lot, Bill. I, he should have thought about that, uh, his last shot that he, uh, that he had too. It was a great shot. Earlier in the match, he could have put him behind the four ball after pocketing a ball on his opening shot. Uh, Bustamante could have pocketed a ball, the two ball earlier in the match, or the one ball, and, and tried to stuck him behind the four ball. Well, I think he got a good roll right here. You can see the seven. The seven ball, does it look like it goes in the side? If it goes in the side, he still has to deal with the six, though. Okay, here's what I would do. I would pocket the seven. This is what I would do here. I would pocket the seven. I, I would have pocketed the seven in the side, and then I would have sent the three ball down table, repositioning the cue ball over here somewhere. That's they have that, the three to break yeah, open. Now, now it doesn't matter what Eminem does. Bustamante is going to step to the table with a viable option. See, since the eight blocked the pocket for the 15, that was a very, very good time, an opportune time for Bustamante to reposition one of those solid balls down this end of the table because he can't pocket the 15. Now when he comes off the 15, the 15 will then be a, a ball that can be pocketed from somewhere. See, now, uh, once again, if he would have positioned a solid down the center of the table, Eminem couldn't have done this. Do you see what I'm saying? Exactly. Okay, so that's the strategy I would have employed there. I would have repositioned, I would have pocketed the seven in the side and repositioned one of my solids down this end of the table, which would have then precluded from Eminem doing something like this because if I would have had a solid down here. I agree with you, Bill, on that. I think also, if you from the beginning of this game, I think Bustamante would have never been in this spot if he did, uh, if he chose uh, another shot for his opening shot, his first shot, and it would have been. Uh, he's uh, he's created this problem for himself here, Bustamante, to. Uh, No, he's really. He's, you know, you know what I think he's looking at, Bill. I think he's looking at playing the billiard on the six to the twelve, leaving the cue ball there. The seven will block the fifteen. He could, he could hit the uh, hit the six ball, pocket the twelve right here, leaving the cue ball, leaving the cue ball right here. Notice the seven blocks out the 15. Okay, now if that's what he has in mind, that's a very that's a very intelligent shot and if it, that's what he doesn't have in mind, that's a very very intelligent observation. <laughs> well, that's what he did. Did he let him see it though? I don't think if so. He, if he let the I don't think he, he can pocket the 15. He's going to have to twirl it a little. Well, he's going for the jump. There's now in this tournament, there's no jump cues allowed, but uh, I don't believe he has to jump over a whole ball here. I don't think he should have any trouble jumping this with his own stick. Well, keep in mind the seven ball is a good th two to half, two and a half to three feet from the cue ball, so it's not that easy of a ball to jump. I, I think he's got a better chance twirling it like he's doing here. Well, Bustamane, he, he he did put him in a tough spot. That was a great shot he shot. <clears throat> I think he should have no problem finishing off this table here as long as he uh, plans it out. That's that's. 
You won't see that happen too much by uh, Well, you know, he's made two Monte. unforced errors up to this point of the match. He, he misplayed positioning on the sixth ball in the preceding game. And now he's missed the ball in the hole. And he really hasn't strategically planned out anything that effective as well. So he can't really be feeling that good about his execution and thinking up to this point. And he has to uh, get with it. Well, Eminem has taken a 2-0 uh, lead in the match. Eminem uh, wins game number two. After two games, the score is Mr. Eminem 2, Mr. Bustamante 0. Mr. Bustamante breaks in game number three. Bustamante actually was the favorite, the favorite to win both games. Without a doubt, Bill. Without a doubt. Uh, very, you know, few errors are both, uh, they both seem a little and I think uncomfortable. Which, yeah, you're, you're right. I'm sorry. I think what's largely responsible for his... His losing the second game was the inexperience of him playing eight ball because he should have definitely repositioned the low ball down here. He gave Eminem two or three chances to reposition the cue ball down this end of the table with running any risk of uh, losing the losing the game. Eminem, you know, did that a couple times, and he put more pressure on Bustamante. Here comes that power, that power break. Again, balls opened up beautifully yeah. like they do. And, uh, and either color is uh, is acceptable here. I'm trying to, I'm scoping out this table here. Uh, I, I would believe he's going to take the solids because it's his easiest uh, first shot. You know how I would play this? I would play five, two, four, six, seven. Two, uh, uh, wait, wait, five, two, seven, four? No, five, two, four, six, seven. Because the six to the seven is easy. Seven to the eight is easy. It's right there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't save the four for my key ball. Well, he has the six. Well, the six. He, I, would, I would say he's probably going to use the six for his ball to get on the eight ball. The I like, four I, or six. See, there's no traffic in between the seven and the eight. You know what I mean? No traffic in between the seven and the eight. That's why I would use a seven as a key ball. Now he's going to go two, four, six, eight. Exactly. But he has traffic there. He has to get above the twelve. I like to take the route where there's no traffic, and he has the ability to reposition the cue ball close to the seven off the six because of the position of the six. Now, see, he's awkward on the four. Now he's got a decision to make. Do I go into the eight and push the eight down to the rail, and that's, that makes it just a stop-stop proposition? Or do I float past the eight and play position on the eight, off the six? Well, that's where well, he's not he floated okay. down. He but has still, an angle. But there's still traffic here. Okay. Well, I like to stay. On this shot here, I would make sure I don't flirt with the traffic at all. Yeah, I'd either okay. go all the way out or just like that, make sure I come right in between those two balls. Well, the third game is going to go to Bustamante, and he's going to be trailing two to one. <laughs> with him and in breaking. Mr. Bustamante wins game number three. After three games, the score is Mr. Eminem two, Mr. Bustamante one. Mr. Eminem will be breaking in game number four. So in that in that particular layout, you know, going the way he did, looked like a like a good way to go. But there's a rule of thumb: you really don't want to flirt with traffic at the end of your color, you know, if unless you absolutely have to. That's why I I, I usually choose a route where there's no traffic. Particularly if you have a good lead ball to the key ball, it'll put you close enough to the key ball where you won't, you know, you don't have a problem pocketing it. Well, let's see if Eminem continues to break well. Both of these players breaks. I just, it's just phenomenal how great they break. Mm. 
Got a lot of movement, but I don't see any balls going to the hole. No. Okay, the high balls are the balls that he'll probably choose because of the difficulty of, of uh, a shot on the low ball. He doesn't even have a shot on the low ball, so he's going to be forced to take the high ball and deal with the, the congestion down this end of the table. Right here, where the 12, 14, and 6 and 8 are. And the, actually, the high balls are the beneficiary. The high balls are, 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 are a better group because of the 14, this ball right here. It goes in this pocket, which will loosen up the other two balls. Well, loosen up the eight ball, that's the key. Uh, and a 12, you're right. The 12 ball, too, is uh, in a little bit of, uh, has a little problem there and a little bit of traffic. Uh, it's going to be important to get these balls out. And he has a problem with the 11 ball, well, the pattern, which the 13 connects to. Right. So The pattern is here, is like this. Now, you probably see it a similar way. Pocket the nine ball, play position for the 10 ball, then for the 13 ball, then for the 11 ball, and obviously you have the 15 ball here and the 14 to break loose the balls there. See, I play position for the 10 there. See, because the 10 needs to be eliminated off the table. He should go 13, 11, and then he's got to go for the 10. He may get tough on the 11. He may not be able to play position for the 10 with the angle he leaves himself on the 11. You understand? See, now he may not be able to play position for the 10 because of the awkward angle on the 11. Had he shot the 10, eliminate the 10, then shot the 13, then the 11, the 15's in front of the pocket. Bill, I think he's, he might be thinking just to leave the 10 as kind of an insurance ball when he does go into the, uh, when he does break open those balls. I think Larry's right. Is he? Now he's going to have to take a lot of care with this 15 ball and make sure he falls on the uh, 14. He better get back for the 14 because if he doesn't, the 10 ball is not really the ball I would want to shoot because. Well, he hit it beautifully. That's a that's a great touch there, isn't it? I mean, to just draw the ball back about three or four inches like that from that distance, that's, that's a great touch. Hmm. Well, I think Big he trouble. should. Big trouble here, Larry. Yeah, I believe he should have looked at that a little more carefully and tried to uh, determine exactly how those balls were going to break out. I mean, he was only breaking open uh, three balls. He should have been able to, uh, you know, gone into the six fuller and broken them out a different way. See, now he does have big, big trouble here. I don't even think the eight, the twelve ball goes in any any pocket, other than a bank cross right side, side, a bank cross side. Goes in the right hand side. It's Well, he'll be able to, he could play it in the uh, side pocket straight into the side, but then the position, he's going to have to, what he's going to do, he's going to spin back. He's going to try to. Uh, boy, what a beautiful shot. Yeah, the bank cross side is probably the only real available pocket he has on this other shot. That allow him to get position. Cutting the ball on the side, he's going to go into the six full. And he wouldn't fall on the eight ball. But I don't even know what kind of an angle he has. If he can there, follow there's it. There's a little better view on our... Uh, he may be able to follow it. I don't know. This is a tough situation. He's, uh, he's in here. He may be able to follow it and carry him off the six, sending the cue ball over here, sending the six over here. But he has to make sure he controls the six. I don't think he can, though. Yeah. If he took this uh, little extra time on that cluster, I think he would have been in, in better shape. But uh, here he's... electing to bank it. 
and came up short, Bill. Now he becomes a uh, very big underdog in this game. Which is a real big game, too, because uh, Eminent, if uh, he runs out here like he, like he should, he's going to go ahead in this match 3-1, to one, and that's not what uh, Francisco wanted, to be behind 3-1. to one. Eminent did not pocket a ball on the break. Francisco had a great opportunity there. That well, came out perfect, but yeah. it was dangerous. Well, it was it dangerous. Wasn't, it wasn't anything guaranteed with it, but uh, it was okay as long as he uh, provided he pocketed the ball. He's going to go over, play the one ball, and uh, come over for the two ball. I kind of like saving the two, seven, eight is my keys. You know, maybe four, six, five, two, or four, five, six, two, four in a corner, five in a left corner, six in a side, two, seven. I don't know. Yeah, I agree with you, Bill. The seven ball is a great <laughs> ball to get right on the eighth. It's hard not to, uh, you know, it's a very good key ball. Close to the pocket. Six. Six, five. Exactly six, how you five, said two, the six, seven. five, two, seven. Well, I don't think he wanted that. No, he wanted he, to force it down another two or three inches. Now he may have to revise his plan. Yes, I'm surprised he just didn't roll it in instead of trying to force it. Uh, well, he... I, He's in good position here. He's not going to have. I don't. Uh, I don't foresee him having any problem with these three. Well, he got a little flat on this angle, but uh, still workable. Eminem's going to take a lead of. Three games to one, and Bustamante is going to be breaking. And that's what he does. Look at here, the cue ball got away from him just a little there. Mr. Eminen <laughs> wins game number four. He now leads the match three games to one. In game number five, Mr. Bustamante breaks. This is going to be a very key break for Bustamante if he wants to stay in this match, uh, which... Uh, that's his long suit breaking, so I could see him breaking and running out here. So much wrist into the break, his last, it's like all wrist and body. <laughs> and three balls? Five balls. Oh, he only made five. <coughs> five balls. He only, five balls on the break. Now five. that's a break. <laughs> five balls. <laughs> five balls. Four. Four. <laughs> four balls. Oh, four balls. The two balls, two balls hidden behind the Yeah, we, we, from our angle, we couldn't see it. Four balls on the break. Scott has just let us know. <laughs> In the meantime, he's going to shoot the low balls. There's three highs and seven lows left on the table. <laughs> he's going to shoot the low balls. Well, <laughs> it just, that goes to show you that's the way the balls are positioned. Plus, and he doesn't have a shot. No, he. Uh, he did he? I don't he does he not a have shot. a shot. <clears throat> Well, if he doesn't, that's that's extremely careless. I mean, that's he's he's getting down on the four ball. I believe he's 
he can shoot the four ball, and he's going to come right up for the uh, five or the, yeah. He is, he is uh, losing position a little bit, you know. Normally he has a lot better control of the uh, cue ball. Very good shot. I can uh, see he better uh, start thinking about that one ball. Well, I'm sure he's going to go from the three to the one, three on the side to the one in the corner. One, one, ball. one ball will be the key ball, I'm sure. They'll play the six, the two. It'll be the one ball or the two ball. One, he might come out for the... the two ball might be the key ball. Right, and now he's going to play the three on the side, the one and the two coming down for the eight ball. Oh, he he doesn't bad. want to be straight. He Boy, he's, he's, here, he? he's getting a little careless on the uh, on his position. Nope, he Scott Smith right on top of it. If his shirt happens to just touch the object ball, that would be ball in hand for him. And that's one thing Bustamante doesn't want to do. But looks like now he'll go two cushions toward the eight, playing the position for the eight in the lower corner. If he would have got thinner on the two, he could have played the side easily. No, he's still going to play the side, and he's made it, he's done a nice. He got uh, well, Francisco staying right in the match, trailing three games to two. Mr. Bustamante wins game number five after five games. The score is Mr. Eminem three, Mr. Bustamante two. In game number six, Mr. Eminem will break. And like I mentioned, Eminem has his record is two to one, two and one, two wins and one loss. Bustamante's record is two wins and no losses. Griffiths uh, right now is in the lead in the tournament with three wins and no losses. He's going to play a little later on this evening against Troy Frank. But it's absolutely essential for Eminem if he wants to win this tournament, which I'm sure he does, to win this match. He cannot afford to lose it. You will not win this uh, round robin event with two losses. That's for sure. He already has one. Without a doubt, without a doubt, and uh, Francisco has no losses, so. Uh. Well, the balls. He pocketed, uh, he pocketed a ball. Balls are open, except for a little cluster along, you know, at the side, which I think he should deal with, uh, deal with right now. Well, it looks like he's going to take the low balls. Everything seems to be open. After pocketing the three, the 12 will then go into the four, sending the four down the table, and then all the low balls will be open. Uh, if he goes with the high balls, he's got a problem with the 12, so he can't afford to have that happen to him, so uh, he's opted to go with the low balls. All right, right now he should determine exactly how he wants to play all of these balls. It would be like playing nine ball, but you get to put the numbers on the ball. He's, 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 either he's got to go get to the seven now, or he's got to save the seven for a key ball. Well, I think he got a little bit straighter than he wanted to on the two to be able to do that. I think he's going to have to, like you said, save the seven for a, uh, for a key ball. Best, the best pattern I see here, Bill, is to go from the two to the six, for then come down for a nice angle on your one, and then to the four, and then over for the seven on the rail. See, but he doesn't have a real good lead ball to the key ball with the seven. That's why it's going to be tough to save the seven for a key ball. He wouldn't. Wa he, he doesn't want to save the seven for a key ball, but he might be forced to. And if he's forced to save the seven for a key ball, he's going to have a lot of extra work. So he's trying to decide, you know, the best way to attack this here. Well, he. Well, he almost went a little bit too far. He does have the he four. Did. He has the four, but uh, this is going to be tough because he doesn't want to.
the six for a lead to the key ball because then he'll move the eight. You know? So I think I think he's better off playing four, seven, six, one now. Now that he's here, I think he's better off playing four, seven, six, one. That way he won't have to move the eight because he'll the six with a soft speed. So he may be better off playing, well, I still think he's better off playing 7-6 here. I agree with you. I agree with you because from the 1 to the 7, is a it's problem. not, it's, you know, I, I'm sure he will get there, but it's it's a lot more difficult. If you get, if you play the 7 right now. Right. I like okay, the 7 now. You, you have to, I think, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that's what he's going to do. He's going to realize, he's realizing he better do that. See, there's no guarantee that he's going to end up with an angle on the one ball to get comfortably on the seven. That means close to the seven. So he's better off playing the seven now, which could possibly be a problem a little later on in the rack, eliminating that possibility now. You know, from the one to the eight shouldn't be that big of a problem. You just want to make sure you give yourself that angle on the one R right there. Perfect. He went down to the rail. He gave himself a little bit of an angle. I don't think he should have any trouble here. Well, I wouldn't say that. He still has to deal with both the 13 and the 10. He has to make up his mind which ball he wants to clear. Does he want to clear the 10, or does he want to play field goal position? He played the field goal position right in between, and he did a great job. Okay. And now, that wasn't a problem for him. But, uh, you know, but, but, but shooting the 7 and not saving it for a key ball was definitely the right move there. This is game, uh, I believe it's game, game number... That was game number six. six. Bill Eminent's taking the lead four games to two. And Bustamante will be breaking. Mr. Eminent wins game number six. After six games, he leads the match four games to two. In game number seven, Mr. Bustamante breaks. See, the seven was a good key ball, but the problem with the, with the seven being the key ball, he didn't have a good lead ball to the key balls. So therefore, you almost have to eliminate that type, the seven as a key ball because of that reason. See, the 7 and the 8 were both positioned on the same side of the table, which is good if, you, if you're looking for a key ball because you don't have to move the cue ball. But uh, the fact that he didn't have a good lead ball to the 7, the key ball, actually eliminated the, uh, the, uh, the possibility of using the 7 as your key ball. And he did get very good position on the 7 from the 4. Well, Bustamani made four balls his last break. Let's see what he's going to do this Do you who makes three or more than three? I would say three. Uh, only about one. one. Only one. Well, I would have been three or under. Well, I hope he's not <laughs> upset. <laughs> he's, without, he's without a doubt the greatest breaker in the world. I mean, nine ball, eight ball, just a... How'd you like to play him on a bar table? <laughs> I might, he might make all the balls. <laughs> There's only one I man can't. that I know that has a chance to beat him on the bar table. Only one man in existence on this planet. I, I'm not talking about on other planets. I'm talking about on this planet. Dave Madlock, who, who would be? Uh, that's our master of ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what his high run of Rex is on a bar table. I imagine it's pretty high. Well, he gave King Kong, who's a local player here in the L.A. area, who's regarded as a very strong bar table player. You know, well, there's a lot of players that don't play that well on the big table but are very strong bar table players. Well, he gave that very, very strong bar table player the 8-9 and nine and made short work of him. No kidding. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's... This is, this is an interesting rack here. He has to be very careful. He has to plan it out, make sure he... You know, a, little, a lot of spots there you want to thread the needle. You know, he has solids. He's elected solids, okay? Five ball's a little bit of a problem. One ball's a little tight, too. Well, so. the, seven, the seven ball is in front of him, which will put him on the five. So he shouldn't have a problem with the five. And then the one ball, he's going to... Uh, He's going to have to stop right here for the five. Okay, the next ball he should play shape for is the one. The one ball is a problem ball. Playing shape for the one, I think, really opens up the rack for him nicely. It's very important he falls very good on the one here. 
And also, if he doesn't fall on the one, he'll have the four ball. So but if notice he how if he doesn't fall on the one, it, his chances are dr really d decreased dramatically. Well, if he comes out right here, for he shouldn't have any trouble. Well, he came out the short way, which he's going to leave himself jacked up. Okay, now he's going to have to elevate, like Larry said. Now, not only is he going to have to elevate, he's going to have to... Uh, well, he's, he's looking to shoot to four. I don't think he's going to like that option, so immediately he goes back to the one. You know, you have to get rid of this ball here. It's, it's not a very good ball for him, and it's, not, it's very hard to, to access. The, you know, it's he's, not very accessible. He's going to roll the one in. He's going to come down for the four on the side because it's a lot easier to, uh, to roll this being backed up. Fell perfect. Yeah, that's this. perfect. All you need to do is stop right where the four is. We'll, we'll give him a nice natural angle on the two to, to send the cue ball to the eight in the side. This okay. is natural. Yeah. This is no English at all. After contacting the two, the cue ball will pick up a little bit of natural right-hand English, sending him past the eight for position for the side. No English required on this shot. Yeah, I I'm very impressed the way you got out this rack. I'm just, uh, it's very, you know, it looks like he's settled down. He's got control of his cue ball again. Came up, I just, I, I said that. He, no, but he's still okay. He came up in an area where he had to have position. He's playing it in the side. He's trailing four games Maybe. to two. And uh, after pocketing the eight, he'll narrow the gap to within one game. Four games to three. To three. And it'll be Inman's break, so uh, it looks like Inman, and uh, it's, you know, it's, it, the game is in his court right now. He has Bustamante control of the game. Bustamante wins game number seven after seven games. The score is Mr. Eminem four, Mr. Bustamante three, Mr. Eminem breaks in game number eight. I should say Eminem has control of the match, not the game, because, exactly. uh, you know, he has a, he's a break ahead, and uh, with these two power breakers, it's, uh, you know, big advantage. Yeah, he has, he has control of the match simply because he does have a, a game advantage and has the break. And if he, uh, he loses service, he loses on his break, then once again, the, the, the uh, Bustamante will have control breaking on the hill for the match if it ever gets that far. Good man. And there has been quite a few hill-hill matches here. And I couldn't, I wouldn't, this wouldn't surprise me at all if this match went hill, hill, Bill. Lusardo pushing the uh, tight rack up. Every ball Let's frozen. See. He made a ball on As the break. They always are. He pocketed two stripes on the break. Here's a, here's a, uh, here's a spot where he has uh, the nine, six. Look a little, a little bit tied up. I think he's going to go for the solids, playing the nine-six. This is a very interesting rack here, and it's so important right now to take as much time as you need to figure out exactly what you want to do with the rest of the rack. Because this first shot will determine, you know, how easy it is for you for the rest of the game. I think about playing position for the three down the corner. Okay, well, <clears throat> he doesn't need to worry about that. Okay, the problem area is the four ball for him. He's got to get good on the four. He would like to actually li eliminate all balls on this end of the table that he's working on now. All, all four, one, two, five, and three and then come down table for the four, but not necessarily in that oh. order. And he would like to end up straight in on the four so he could then use the seven as a key ball if he, if he chooses to do that. Bill, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes from come down for the seven, which will be an easier ball to fall on than the four, and then go from the seven to the four, then the eight for his last three balls. The way I see that would be the one, the one ball, the five ball, the three ball, the two ball, taking the angle on the two ball to just come, come over... Uh, Stopping right here. You want to get right on the five ball right now. Just like that. Come out for the three ball.
He wants to come out for the three ball, come towards the center of the table, shoot the three ball. He's looking where he wants to be on the three. Then from the two ball, come down for the seven ball. I think that, you know, I kind of like shooting at four before the seven, Larry, because I don't want to, if I'm going to use the four, seven as keys, he might even opt to, uh, opt to come down for the four off the three here. He felt perfect. He felt perfect on the uh, three ball. Well, he may play two, three, four, seven here. No, I would prefer to play three. Two, seven, four, just for the simple reason you don't want to go below the four ball. If you go below the four ball, then the seven is, if you come, you know, too low on the four ball. See, the angle he's left himself with, with is a very easy angle to feel. If he stays high on the rail and shoots to four, then getting to the eight is no problem. So that's an easy okay, angle to feel. Okay, but if he comes below the four right now, Bill, like I believe he has, he has a problem. He has a problem. That's why I would have liked to have gone on to the seven and then to the four. See, this is the problem that I was talking about. Well, that's understandable. He does have a problem. Whether or not he can uh, draw the ball and then clip the ten, you know, remains to be seen. He, if he can do that, this is this is that was very. Uh, See, he was he was kind of he was kind of. Uh, Deciding on the three whether he'd be better off doing it when he was on the three and leaving the two there as an insurance ball, but he went two, three, four, seven. I would have see see now he's playing a ball he could have been perfect on and uh, he should have never been in the spot. Now he has to come up and down, fall on the four. Now I mean you know this is now now you're going to become now he's going to try he has to get lucky here to get perfect, which I don't think he has. So no, he, no, no. he really, he put himself in a bad spot. And uh, I don't you, know what, if he has you know, a well, I understand what you're saying, and you're right on what you're saying. But I still would have liked for him to have walked around the table to see how far he could have gone before he would have been confronted with a problem that, that you recognized right away. You know, it, it, how, how high on that side reel could he have been before he was hooked on the other ball? Right, exactly, which he didn't do, and that was the key to the rack. I mean, the rest of it he played perfect. He still, I believe, can cut this ball in. He's going to, he has to, he has to go all out here. I mean, he just, you have to make this ball. He does have a, you know, actually, he is fortunate to even have this much of a shot on the four. Scott Smith right on top of it, just in case he should. He hit this ball beautifully too. He's gonna he's gonna wind up getting out here, and uh, I think he's very fortunate too. Well, that gives him an in a five to three lead here. Eminen wins game number eight. After eight games, the score is Mr. Eminen five, Mr. Bustamante three. Mr. Bustamante will break in game number nine. And once again, Lou Sardo pushes up the Sardo tight rack. And when you use the Sardo tight rack, you're assured that every ball is frozen. That's uh, every it's ball. It's it really, and it's one of the reasons why uh, the players are really breaking the ball, ball as well because every ball is frozen. That's exactly right, yeah. too. That's incredible, and it just takes about two or three seconds to rack the balls. So, uh, in my opinion, and uh, I would accompanied by so many other professional players that the Sardo rack is by far the standard in the industry, in the in the industry today. I'm going to pick three balls on this break. One. One. And a half. One and a half. Fifteen almost went. Okay. <laughs> balls are wide open. Balls are even separated. But Strauss dollars are up on that side of the table. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the uniqueness in the layout is that yeah. all the solids are on this end of the table. All the stripes are on the other end of the table, which, in my opinion, obviously makes solids the, the, the ball of choice because the eight's down here as well. 
You mean stripe salad? Excuse me, stripes. Yes, yes. Stripes yeah, yeah stripe, without yeah. a doubt. Well, that's a. Uh, I mean, that's amazing. I want to show you 13, 13, 15. I'd go to the 15 next right away. Because you want to shoot the 9 to, to get on the 12. Yeah. Bustamante's got such a powerful break. And like I mentioned, the Sardo rack racks the balls perfectly every time which actually increases the chances of, uh, of players pocketing balls of the break because you get more action. And the Simona surface certainly helps a lot too because oh, the Simona surface is such a beautiful surface. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fast playing surface and it's the, Simona's is the only company that makes just a pool cloth since 1680. You know? Oh my and gosh. And it's, it's, it's a cloth of choice by all the professionals. It's been around for so many years. It plays so consistent. It's, it's really a, it's a great cloth. And now that we're mentioning uh, the equipment, we can't neglect the diamond table. In many pros' uh, opinion, it's the standard for the pool tables in the world today, the diamond table. Look at how beautiful. It's called the diamond smart table. It's got the diamond wood epoxy finish. It has an optical density scanner that, that allows the cue balls to be returned at one end and, and all the other balls at the other. And uh, it's... It's, it's actually a one-piece slate, which is, which is quite a unique. And if uh, laid in correctly, installed right, you can't beat a one-piece slate. No, that's the most solid table you can have. Also, the rails, I've seen the cue ball taken, a ball taken, pounded on the rails. Now, here's Bustamante stretching over this. Look at the stretch he's got here. He's going he's gonna to win this game. You could, the, the, the table is so durable. I've seen the object ball. I thought somebody was mad at somebody who was slamming the object ball on the rail. And he was just showing somebody that you can't, you can't damage the rails. Bustamante is going to win game number nine. He's going to be trailing in the match 5-4. But like, uh, like we said earlier, Eminem, it's the, the game. The uh, match is in his control. He's going to be breaking. They are both playing great now. They have settled down. They're both they're both breaking and running out on each of their breaks, which is you know what a, what a key. Very nice out. And uh, in in pocketing the eight, he had to make sure that he Bruce didn't foul Monte any of the balls with his shirt. After nine games, the score is and he was Eminem awfully five, close to, to fouling, Monte and he had to get four. in that awkward in position, number ten, Mr. you know, Eminem which he was breaking. able to do, and he pocketed the eight successfully. <clears throat> well, like Larry said, winning game number nine, narrowing the gap to within five games to four. This is such a great thing too, to be able to watch, watch these type of tapes, to be able to learn from and get the instruction. It's incredible the job Pat Fleming does with this and AccuStats. Camera work, excellent. I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah, Pat really has a, a great crew uh, here. Dean Gupton on camera number two, Julian Robinson on camera number one. Merlin at the control with the graphics. Oh. <laughs> Imminent's holding his art. He's so lucky he didn't scratch. It looked like 13 was going to come back and hit the cue ball in the, uh, in the pocket. It didn't, but he does have his work cut out for him here. He's going to wind up taking a uh, corner hook on the three. He's, we've just been informed by Scott Smith, he is corner hooked on the three ball. He's going to have to shoot the 13, Bill, if he has a pocket down here for the 13. Or he's looking at uh, the five, possibly. The five ball, he may be looking at the five. And uh, the 12 ball is an awfully big ball, because after pocketing the five, the cue ball is going to go in the direction of the 12, and something bad could happen. Okay, he made that... Uh from here, the balls are wide open. Uh, he should have no trouble here. I don't foresee any problem here if he could, uh, you know, come up on the one ball. I don't, I'm not sure which ball he's going to pick. The way I see this pattern is I see shooting the two ball now, but... Uh, He's not looking in that direction, but I, I would I believe. feel that he must shoot the two ball now. Yeah. I don't think he has an option. And he's looking at the, trying to shoot the one, but why would he leave the two and the six on this end of the table? Exactly. I, I, 
I believe he has to go from the two to the six, then the one. The one is an easy ball, an easy key ball to get right onto the four. But he's shooting the one ball. Well, he may not like, like the angle he has on the two to drop for the six. Well, it might be too big of a reach. One or, let's see. Oh. Well, he's going to have to, I don't know, he's going to have to bring the cue ball toward the seven or, or around the four seven, one of the two, because those two balls are really not laying that well for him. Right. I believe he's going to try to shoot the four in the same pocket. He's going to shoot the three. He's going to draw back right where he just tried to, just where he laid the cue. Yeah. He's going to try to come back for the four straight in the same corner. Now he's going to want to stop here and play the seven right into the side pocket. Yeah, then, the, uh, then the layout seems rather clear now. Four, seven, six, two. Yeah. And now that I've watched him uh, execute this layout, it appears now very clearly that he chose the right way to go. Because the angle that he left himself with on the two earlier in the rack wasn't really conducive for him to play position for the six at that time. It was rather awkward. But uh, in spite of that, I still feel that he chose the right way because of how easily he ran out. Yes, I agree, Bill. I'm, I'm very impressed the way he thinks the game out. He th he's a very good thinker. Well, he's going to take a lead here. He's going to take a... Uh, well, he's managed to, to hold service uh, every time he's broken the balls to, to keep that two-game advantage. Right, exactly. He's yeah. going to go ahead 6-4 here, and Bustamani will be breaking. <laughs> See, that first game when Bustamante played Mr. himself Eminem out of line on the six was a tremendously big Mr. game. Six, Had he not Mr. made that Bustamante error in game number four. one, this, game would have been, this match would have been tied up at be five games apiece. Game number 11. With Bustamante breaking. <clears throat> exactly. The break, winning that lag and, and getting that first break is such a big thing. It really can't be, un, uh, you know, underplayed. It's such a big, big thing. Especially when you have two breakers uh, that break the way these two gentlemen break. It's, it's just totally incredible how they uh, get so much power. And also, Bill, what are the chances of these both these players with these power breaks breaking ten times and nobody's scratched on the break? Maybe you jinxed him, huh? <laughs> Think you jinxed him here? He scratches you. You did it. Yeah. I'm telling you, you did it. It was Larry. He did it. If I if I yeah, he he broke him perfect. Listen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he made two uh, low balls. Excuse me, too many, too many, two stripes. Exactly, exactly. Balls are wide open here. I, I don't see amazing? any problem. Isn't it really amazing that when Bustamante breaks the ball, it just seems like the layout plays much simpler? Yeah, there's no two balls touching. Everything is wide open. You know? It also shows, too, that the size of Bustamante shows that you don't have to be power. You know, Roger Griffiths is very big, also has a great break, but... Now size, shoot, I don't think, has anything to do with it. Shooting this shot, I like shooting the 14, following it, and get to the right of the 9. See, I like getting to the right of the 9. See, he went straight into the 9. Now what's he going to do? Huh? Well, <laughs> I'm trying to see if, if he going has... Going to uh, the right of the 9, look how easy this is. If he, go, if he would have gone to the right of the 9 over here with the cue ball, then he could have swung around here and, and here... Come. Here, right in the middle of the patch. Of that, okay? yes. Now he's straight in. Now he has got to work. He's got to draw back. He's got to. He's got to make sure he doesn't run into any balls. Look. Okay, he fell perfect okay, on the he twelve there. ball. He got there, but he, he's he's acting like he's not real happy with it. I mean, right See, here, he could even went, went over here and, and shot this ball up the corner, and everything would have played simple. Well, he's going to have to just draw back with a lot of control and fall on the uh, thirteen ball in the corner. <coughs> So he just no. wants to. Uh, what, does the 11 go in the upper left-hand corner? Uh, from my view, I don't think it does. I think if the it's, 11 it's goes in the upper left-hand, well, that's the shot to shoot, the 11 in the upper left-hand corner. Get straight in and shoot the 11 in the upper left-hand. Now he's shooting 11 in the side. I don't know. He's got to do a lot of traveling no, here. He's, he's, I believe he is going to shoot it up in the corner. I mean, I don't think he's, yeah, he's looking at it in the corner. Okay. Um, well, that, that, I thought that he should have followed it a little bit more. Hit it perfect, too. 
Beautiful shot. Game 11. This should all be routine here. He's uh, He hit that uh, that perfectly. Game 11 is going to go to Bustamante. He's trailing in the match six games to five. What a great match. Mr. Bustamante wins game number 11. After 11 games, the score is Mr. Eminent six, Mr. Bustamante five. Mr. Eminent breaks in game number 12. Well, in each game that goes by, increases the importance of winning that first game, the game we faltered on, each game. Exactly, both players are holding their, their serve or break, they're both breaking and running out, and this is gonna be, uh, this is a very important break for Eminem, it could put him right on the hill. Uh, yeah, in between, uh, is it your break now? Or, uh, in between games, in, in between games, okay, uh, on your break. I think Bustamante asked Scott Smith if he could take a break, and Scott said that you can only take a break in between games only if you're the player breaking the balls. I like that uh, rule. Oh, he's come up dry on the break. Oh, boy. You know, it looked like he hit him easier, too. It looked like he took a little something off. The break there, and I don't uh, think so. I mean, the ball's exploded. He just didn't make one. That's all. Now this is exactly what Bustamante desperately needed because he really couldn't afford to see Eminem win this game and take a seven-five advantage, needing to win then three consecutive games to win the match. That's really insurmountable, just about. So therefore, he must do well with this opportunity. The door is open. Actually, his destiny is in his control once again. If he can run out here, he can tie up the match six apiece and then still be the, the, the guy in the final game, if it gets that far, to have the break in the final game well, to win the match. And also, Bill, if he breaks here, he's tied up 6-6, six, six, and he'll be breaking. So, really, uh, he's become a favorite just because... No, he's not a favorite unless he wins this game. Right. I look at him. I do look at him to run out here. These balls, they are laying a little funny. I still make him the favor to run these balls. He's thinking out this rack extremely carefully. He's gonna wind up taking stripes. He's gonna shoot the 15. He is, his only problem, Bill, is the 12 ball, which is uh, over by the two ball. Yeah, it definitely looks like to me that the solids is a better choice, but yeah. uh, unfortunately for Bustamante, he doesn't this, have an offensive shot on the side. With stripes, this is his only problem ball right here, but he does have this ball here to get to that. Which he's looking at right now. He's coming right down for it. I think he wanted to get a little closer, but... Uh, I think he should be okay here. I would I would elect to to get this out of the way right now. He's going to shoot the 14 drawback for the 12. He has plenty of insurance balls. Oh, he's shooting the 12. That's even he felt perfect on the 12. Okay, he's got to be careful here because now he's going to be going over to the other side of the table if he shoots the 14 that is, okay? And there's no guarantee now, I like for him to draw this shot. I don't think he has much of a future if he follows it. I do, too. If he draws it, he's going to come very close to the 11. But he has to, if he can stay on top of the 11, that's where he wants to be. Now, I, I, I'd entertain the, the, the shot on the 10 at the other corner now. That'll put him in a good line for the 11. If he, if he draws the cue ball back where it is now, Shoot, eliminating the 10, draw the cue ball back to where it is now, maybe a little bit further, playing position then for the 9, stopping straight in on the 9. Then you have a shot in the 13, and try to do the best you can to fall on the 8. I wouldn't be surprised if he thinks about leaving the 11 before the 8. No, he did exactly what you... No, he wanted to get straight in on the 9. He wanted to leave the 11 to get onto the 8, I believe.
See, I kind of like getting it down a little bit further so you can cut the 11 in and then go across the table a little bit. Well, notice, notice how he doesn't want to risk losing the cue ball. He settles for a longer shot, which is uh, this, that's very smart. That's yeah, you really can't run the risk of, of uh, hooking, hooking himself like he did in game number one. He didn't hook himself, but he played himself on the line. Stopping the ball. That's yeah. fine. Now he can go around the five here, or he can go forward. I like going around the five. Sending the cue ball toward the seven. In between the seven and the eight. He has that option, or what, to go between the three and the four? I think he's going. This one increases the accuracy of the shot. Going backwards with the draw stroke increases the accuracy of the shot, providing that he has the angle to swing two cushions comfortably. He's going to play the outside of the pocket with the 13, the right side. Oh, he went the other way. I didn't and, like that. And, and you're right, Bill. He's going to wind up. Like he's that. not going to wind up liking it either. I don't think. Ooh. I'm That's not sure. That was that was that was dangerous. He likes it. He likes it. He's, we've been informed by Scott that he can see this ball. He has a good shot, but he got lucky. Your way would have come out a lot. Uh, he wouldn't have been flirting with that. His way was better if there wasn't any traffic because he's going into the angle. He's going toward the eight ball, and he's always in line. But that wasn't the case. He did have a little traffic. Well, and he almost created an accident that he really couldn't have uh, dealt with. Mr. Bustamante wins game number 12. After 12 games, the match is tied at six. Mr. Bustamante is taking his break. Okay, the score is tied at six games apiece. Bustamante took a break, and we're going to take a break as well. We'll be right back. Okay. Mr. Bustamante breaks in game number 13. The match is tied six games apiece. Can we have a hand for okay, Bustamante? Okay, we're back in action here. Bustamante at the table preparing to break the balls in game number 13. Match is tied up at six games apiece. Two out of three. Don't forget, it's a must win for Eminem. His record is two and one. Bustamante's record is two and zero. This is a round robin event, and you cannot afford to lose two matches and win the event. And once, oh, the, oh, there goes a the high ball. That's right. And the control, the cue ball, is just phenomenal. Okay, if the 14 passes the 7 in the lower right-hand corner, the high balls will be his choice. Uh, let me see if we can get some assistance. Uh, the master of ceremonies is near the table. Does the 14 pass the 7 ball in the lower right-hand corner? It certainly does. So therefore, I was just informed by Scott Smith that the 14 passes the 7 in the lower right-hand corner. And he's asking if he could use the 4 to shoot the 13, which, uh, of course, he can. It's yes. an open table. The rules are it's an open table. After you pocket a ball, you still have your choice. But uh, why would he want to do that anyways? Because the 4 I, may block the pocket for the, for the 10 in the later shot. I agree with you. So uh, I believe that it just must be laying. Uh, I'm looking here on the monitor. It must be laying in a... Uh, He's more comfortable shooting that. And you don't want to hit it with the speed after po pocketing the 4-13 combination. The lead ball, the four ball, blocks a pocket for another ball, a high ball, because they're all high balls down this end. So he has to be careful. He has to hit this softly. If he's going to shoot this, he has to hit it softly. Because he does still have both corner pockets for the 10 ball. And he doesn't want to uh, create congestion on the shot. So if he shoots the 4 into the 13, he uses a soft stroke. Bill, again, notice how, how, how on, as, like the way on an earlier break, most of the stripes are down on this end of the table. Most of the solids are on the other end of the table. That's, uh, <laughs> that makes his life a lot easier, doesn't it? It certainly that does. Happens. Yeah. Shooting the 14 now is, is, is probably the right shot. And I, I myself, it really, there's a hundred ways you can run out here, and none of them are difficult. If you shot the 14 and then eliminate the 10, I think, or, or 14, 15, 10. Yeah, these balls are laying about as sweet as you can, uh, I mean, it's... He don't like it. You know, he's, he's not really adept at using the bridge. And if you remember back in his uh, matches, whenever he has to use the bridge, or he can shoot a shot opposite-handed, he usually shoots it behind his back. I've That's because that. he doesn't like to use the bridge. Yeah. And, you know, he's in, he's in perfect line to shoot the 14. I don't know something why he don't. Uh, he just don't, don't want to shoot it because he don't want to use the bridge. 
Well, he should have no trouble here. He's going to stay here. Yeah, I've seen him shoot the one shot on a blooper tape. No, you know, if, if in fact the 14 didn't have much of a pocket, you know, what he could have done, Larry, is he could have positioned the cue ball in this area here, shooting the 15 and then bumping the 14 slightly, always has the 10 in the side for an insurance ball. You know, he's got to shoot that 14 soon. He's going to shoot it next. Bill, the way these balls are laying, I believe he could shoot them, uh, you know. Well, it's like picking cherries. Now he's here. in the same position he was when he had the bridge. <laughs> he's going to have to reach for this or shoot the 10 and draw back, but he's going to. Uh, Watch the foul here. Watch the foul. Yeah. So no notice problem. how his layout seemed much simpler to execute, to run out, than, than the eminence. <laughs> because of his break, yeah. his powerful break, the balls are so wide open. Right. All right, he's going to be on the hill here. It's going to be 7-6 with imminent breaking. As and when you look back in retrospect through this match, I don't remember the mistake Eminem made to be at a disadvantage. <laughs> I don't. He didn't make a ball on the break uh, in the first. Mr. Eminem six. Mr. Eminem will be breaking in game number 14. You know, Bill, I mean, the only what, what mistakes has uh, Mika made? He didn't make a ball on the break. He, well, the last break, he didn't make a ball on the break. He was in the lead. He was in the lead throughout the match. And then when he failed to pocket a ball on the break, Bustamante has taken advantage of that running that table and also breaking and running out just now. So uh, it's going to be interesting. This is the biggest break. Uh, this is the biggest break of the match for Eminem. That's why I said when you were talking about the differences in the breaking area, that's why I said Bustamante has a much better break. Even though it doesn't Look appear this, because, you because think? of his break, <laughs> he does have a great break. He sure does. How could anyone have a much better break? <laughs> what a what a great, talking about rising to the occasion, he controlled the cue ball. Both these players have controlled the cue ball perfect, you know, perfectly. They, they Neither one is scratched. The four ball is a problem ball, and trust me, it is a problem ball. He, you know, it's a difficult ball to deal with. But the only good thing about the four ball is you have a ball in a good position to get on the four ball, the three ball or the two ball. They're both in a good spot to fall on the four. So that does make it a lot easier. Yeah, but you would like to save the three for an insurance ball and also the two for a good lead ball to the four. You know, uh, and, and then if you do that, you, you, it's hard to get on the four so you can get back to the lead ball. I believe he's going to come for the four. As right he's going now, for the four now. He's for the four. And he, he, so got, he got great on it. He I'll really did. What, the speed that he hit that shot with was just about as perfect as you could hit it. You know, I mean, he hit it with great speed, and he still has a little bit of an awkward angle. You know, see, it, it, it's favoring the, uh, the cut to the, to the left slightly, which will send the cue ball toward the 15. See, now he wants to revise his plan a little bit, but he really can't afford to do that. He's got to shoot the four now. He's got to shoot the four now. That's why I said the four ball is a problem ball. And anyone that thought that it wasn't a problem ball just fooling themselves. It's positioned awkwardly. Even though it appears that it's not, it really is positioned awkwardly. Well, the whole key here is he'd like to shoot the four, not, not going into the 15 and coming back up for the three ball in the side. He may have to accept a long shot on the two here. He didn't miss the 15. That was the whole, uh, that was, that should open up the rack. Well, not necessarily. He's going to shoot the three here, it looks like. And then he's going to be doing some traveling. He's shooting the two ball. Okay. The two. Whoa. <laughs> he luckily hit it that speed. A little that's teaser the, there. But that's huh? why he made it, because he hit it with such a, with such a perfect speed that uh, he, you know, made the pocket have some forgiveness. Well, he'll he'll looks match, like it's Bill. going he'll 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 he'll. But the only problem <laughs> from Eminem is Bustamante's breaking the ball. Yeah, and I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like to be Eminem. 
in this spot. But he did as good as he can do. He, you know, he, he got his job done. He broke, he ran out. We have action in center court. The match is tied. Seven games apiece. It's a race to eight. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a hand, please, for Francisco Bustamante and Mika Eminem. Thank you. Mr. Bustamante breaks in game number 15. How about this to revise the rules slightly in a double in, in a race to eight uh, round robin by format? Any time it goes hill hill, the match has to be decided by has to uh, has to be decided by two games. Okay. In the event that the match is not decided by two games in the next four games, then it can be decided by one game. Give That's him a little extra time. That's little extra time. Bill. <laughs> Bill, I look for Bustamante. I mean, these balls, I wouldn't, I'm, you might see a ball shatter here. <laughs> Whew, wow. Boy, look at the cue ball. Look, I mean, uh, look, look at, at this control. Right. I mean, these, <laughs> look at this break. What, what a break. I mean, there, oh. there's a match that they've played low 15 balls. games and nobody has scratched on the break. Look, a low nobody. balls is really, a, they're really good. High balls are really good. Just about every time he breaks the balls, either color is good. <laughs> low balls. Uh, uh, these balls, yeah, they're sitting, they're sitting very, very good. And uh, I'm trying to see what type of angle he hit. It looks like he has a good shot. He can shoot the one now and the three, then the three. No, he can't shoot the one now. The three he can shoot. He can shoot to three now, going into the nine, sending the nine over here somewhere. The three will go in here. The cue ball will then go here and over here, somewhere around here. Oh, he's going for the low, for the high for the high balls. He's going for okay, the. Okay, well that's, going that's just as good because he has better control with the high balls. Well, it's he, he still has an open table now. <laughs> Right, he, he says, still has an right. open table. That's right, and I and, and I and I would uh, bet that he doesn't realize it, and I would also bet that he doesn't uh, care. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I would also bet that he's going to get out. <laughs> <laughs> but the but the low balls were a much easier run out than the high balls. Yeah. Notice the fourteen ball and, and eleven and the fifteen. Yeah, the they're not really that big of a problem, but they are a problem. But there was no problems with the low balls. And the stripes of fourteen is a problem. It's not a problem, but it, it, oh he yeah, does. yeah, it is a problem. It is a problem. Look where he's let, ended up. He's flat on the twelve. Yeah. He may have to play a combination eleven fifteen. I I really wonder if he was aware that he could have taken solids if he could have switched for solids. Do you think he was aware of that? No, I I would bet he wasn't aware of it. Yeah, anything you'd like, sir. Now he's going to try to uh, get right on this 14, I believe, from here. No, he's going to come down for the combination. He hit it very... You see, the solids were a better layout than the stripes. Because there were a few small problems with the, with the stripes, and that was one of them. See, he got out of line on the 12, and he was forced to play position for this 11-15 combination. And because of that very reason, he couldn't afford to, to get out a little bit, little bit out of line. You can't get a little bit out of line on the combination. That's why he rolled it that easily. And should not have missed it, Bill. That was no, a very, very it, easy but, shot. The pressure. He did. Yes. Because of that reason. Now, Eminem, who's played a really a great match, has the opportunity to win it with, yeah, with, he, with good execution. I'm sure he was trying to get onto the five there, but he's still okay because he passed the five and he has the two ball in the corner. Yeah, but you, you, you really want to save uh, either this one or the six uh, for a key ball. You don't want to save the five. I believe he'll stop right here for the six on the side if he's straight in. I like drawing for the five here just a little bit. Well, he's going to save the five then for a two ball. Six, one, five. But he has to make sure that he ends up on the side of the table that he's shooting from now when he shoots the five. Because he can't afford to, be, to have the other angle on the five sending the cue ball toward the traffic. What a... Uh, Bustamante is to be very... Uh, 
Very dejected. disappointed. He's very dejected. He, he played such a great match, too. No? Uh, he got on the wrong side, but I no, don't well, think he's... No, he's okay uh, because, yeah, he's, uh, you know, he can draw it back. Exactly. Right, right to hit the side. But if he gets too far on the wrong side, then he has a problem. That's why I didn't like the five as a key ball. And it looks like it looks like Eminem's going to go on and win this match, and he, now his record's going to be three and one. But Tamonte's record is going to be two and one, and the only player in the tournament that's going to have an advantage over Eminem is Griffiths, who plays in the next round. Right. Very exciting match. A winner, Mika Eminem. Can we have a hand, please, for Mika Eminem, Francisco Bustamante? Thank you. Yeah, Bustamante has to really be feeling badly Ladies about, and gentlemen, we have a about short what dinner he break. did. We'll be back at 8 o'clock with Reyes versus Bustamante. You know, both, I mean, both players, Bustamante, Reyes really, Bustamante. really, he APM. really started, he, he settled down, yeah, he was breaking and running out every rack. I looked for him to break and run out this rack. That 12 ball, the 12 ball he missed, I think you're 100% right, Bill, if he went for solids or if he was aware that he could have still had solids when the other ball went and shot the one ball, he would have, uh, he would have easily won the game. The solids were much easier out, much easier. See, the 14 was really positioned badly. Okay. All right, we're not going to be doing an interview, Larry, so uh, we're going to close it up. Once again, it's been a pleasure working with you. You've brought up some very interesting uh, solutions to situations that arose out there, and it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Bill. Pleasure working with you, too. Okay, so on behalf of Larry Schwartz, this is Bill Incarno saying thanks a lot for supporting Stats. Give Pat a call, particularly if you're by a phone. 800-828-0397.